Hi folks. Hi Eden. Hi Ian. Welcome. Hey. Hello. Hello. I had, a, I had a conflicting meeting for a long time, and I'm just now able to join again. Oh, that's so fantastic! I haven't, haven't been in here for a while. Did you? Did you have to move your other meeting? No, it just it just uh, it got canceled after a while. So. Ah, okay, okay, got it. <laughs> yes, I mean the this is the issue with um, having morning meetings on the Pacific on Pacific time. It's like there are a lot of meetings. Yeah. <laughs> the projects <laughs> as well as. <laughs> yeah. CNCF meetings and and work meetings at the same time. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining. Hi, Ryan. Hey, folks. Hey. We're just waiting for a couple of uh, you know more some more folks to join in, uh, and then we can get started with uh, the presentation that we have today with Eden. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Hi, Ryan. Maybe we can wait for just one more minute and then get started. If anybody has any other agenda items, please feel free to join, uh, add them to the talk. Well, so what I have is administrivia. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Just updates. At least this time around. <laughs> um, but we finally got our Google Drive. I oh, mean, you did. Awesome. By, fi by finally got, I mean, I am finally pasting the link. And cool. Created some time ago, it appears. So I will fall on a sword about that one. <laughs> <laughs> At least we have it. So that's yeah, I don't know. We have it. <laughs> but um, Ryan, I, I put a, I put a, a link, a link into hotel profiles, but there's a completely blank document there. The only thing there is a title that says like OTEP vision document that we was was bandied about. So, and uh, I'm a little out of order here, but for what it's worth, yes. the CNCF owns that. It's owned by like projects at CNCF, so it's not a human. It's the CNCF. Yeah. So if I if I move existing docs there, the link stays the same, right? Yeah, the link stays the same. You're just adding it as a entry like, in that folder. All right, cool. I mean, the, the physical file, I think, stays the same. Cool. All right, yeah, I can uh, move over the docs that we already have. I think there's like two or three. Yeah, great. And we'll also start adding all the um, you know presentation decks that we've had from the tag in there. Cool. As well as the uh, the logo, which has been kind of floating around on our GitHub repo, but we shall be uh, we have a couple of final uh, two final choices, I think, Matt. Right, so we can take a call and finish that. Uh, <laughs> at for, some point. for what now? For the logo. Oh, the owl. Yeah, I, <laughs> the you know, owl. You know, given given that many of the people that were most strongly opinionated are no longer here, um, I can write up something that's totally awesome about why owls. Makes sense for absolutely no, totally. Go for a it. bunch of cool reasons. It's a fascinating <laughs> animal if you're into fascinating birds. Animal no, they, they are smart. 
That's why if you have enough kids in your house, you end up hearing about <laughs> animals all the time. But um, I can do something for that for next week. Should we cover like the the quick and the quick and easy stuff before we get into um, key Val or Eden's? Um, yeah, that sounds good. It shouldn't take more than five minutes. Sure. Uh, do you want to drive or should I? Yeah, 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 I can. I can do the quick uh, administrative uh, parts. Uh, just wanted to give an update to everybody and have some discussions here. Um, our we had um, submitted a talk from the tag uh, on the uh, maintainers track for, um, and typically, you know, most uh, tags are invited to submit a talk, so we did so. And uh, the good news is that our talk did get accepted. So um, we'll be, you know, planning to put together a presentation and of course sharing it with the everyone on the um, on the tag in order to kind of get feedback and any additions that we'd like to make. So basically presenting an update from the tag. So that's good news. Um, the other part that uh, we are starting to think about, and it would be nice to be able to do this as to, you know, just uh, a lot of folks plan to attend KubeCon and typically, um, especially the the US one for, you know, many of us who are based in the US um, and, and we'd love to kind of at least have a BOF session of some sort. We're trying to figure out if there's any way to get some space from the CNCF, even if it is a uh, room in the evening or, you know, just having a birds of a feather, but if not, you know, maybe just having a dinner together just to meet up and say hi in person. Um, so those are come, some of the areas we're thinking of. Again, you, everyone's welcome to provide, you know, their ideas. If you're coming to Detroit, then uh, definitely would be awesome to catch up and meet. Um, then the next topic I think we had uh, was the TOC uh, update. Uh, and uh, I think that that's something, uh, did you want to quickly talk about that? We just provided an update from the prior hour to the TOC, Matt? Yeah, sure. Uh, we just had that meeting. The TOC is, uh, it, it's synchronized with our meeting uh, first and third. Um, uh, they saw our schedule and the TLC decided to align themselves with us. That's how that happened. Um, bad joke. Uh, so I pasted in the slide. We, we try to do one slide. Sometimes there's more, but today we're brief, bright, and gone. Uh, we just kind of covered what's happened in the last month, roughly, in these communities. The, the talk of the day is uh, hotel profiling. <laughs> um, and you can see the slide right there. So uh, it, was, it was pretty quick. Um, uh, and you know there, there's movement along with the graph stuff, but I don't want to take up time about that. There's there's a, there's a link there to current thinking, uh, and we've reached out to Tag Security is sort of the the news in terms of tag to tag collaboration, so that they could provide input to the data model for packages and NIST um, provided CVEs and yeah, and and I think uh, related to that, there's an exciting opportunity to also work with the tag security. Uh, group because, um, I mean, as many of you know, there are specific SIM um, and security use cases in observability that, you know, uh, typically are advanced use cases, but would be good to kind of also have uh, discussions uh, around identifying uh, what are the most popular use cases and how that can be supported in different uh, projects. Otel has definitely discussed it, you know, uh, and, and in the past. And as logging picks up uh, uh, steam in terms of implementation on Otel, uh, SIM is definitely, and, and security is definitely use cases that, that need to be addressed uh, for most end users, right? So um, again, another interesting area of collaboration. Um, Moving on to the next uh, topic again, um, just a call for you know speakers who, and topics who are for doing a speaker series in the observability uh, tag. Uh, again, please you know share this with your networks and and uh, we'll we'll maintain a Google Doc. You know it's as simple as just adding uh, recommendations for topics and. Uh, and speakers, and it's really interesting to kind of invite even folks who are not attending on a regular basis to come and present, you know, what's happening in their uh, 
neck of the woods uh, on observability and what they're working on. There are a lot of topics that are, you know, adjacent, uh, such as edge um, networks and how do you, you know, observe them and real-time user amount and monitoring eBPF uh, and work that's being done on profiling uh, in a lot of allied areas, if you will, which is which is kind of nice to have intersecting with the with the tag discussions. So uh, that said, Liz Fong Jones, who many of you know, will be presenting on evolving and hybridizing signal types um, on August 16th. So, you know, please do join in. And of course, please share with your networks if other folks can join in to listen. Um, the next item um, that I had was just, you know, calling out the the ability to support APAC time zones with uh, our tag meetings. And some of the other tags are also starting to, you know, kind of support that. Uh, today we support Europe and, and the US, obviously with this time zone and this time meeting, meeting time, but would love to kind of at least have one meeting on the APAC time zone, which means about 4 p.m., you know, uh, Pacific time which is typically good for Asia um, and, and just enabling, you know, many of our participants and contributors from Asia to join in. So again, I think it's nice to have that. We can figure out, you know, what makes sense from a periodicity point of view. Uh, if there's enough momentum, you know, maybe we can start with a once a quarter and then kind of go into once a month. Um, but curious to hear if other folks are you know, what do the folks think? Plus ones. I know we're all on the same time zone. <laughs> so <laughs> to us, it would work out on on Pacific time. It works out because, you know, it's either 8 a.m. in the morning or 4 p.m. in the afternoon. But for the East Coast, it becomes a little later. Um, but anyway, it's it's nice to have folks joining, joining in from, uh, you know, different projects also being worked on out of Asia. Um, and last but not least, we have the new Google Drive folder finally and a link, please bookmark it. You know, that'll be our go-to folder for all the different docs and presentations that we are working on, including white papers and anything else that we want to work on from the tag. All right, I think that's all we had. And uh, again, Matt uh, and Eden, I guess we can turn it over to you. Yeah. Take it away. Um, so uh, Eden reached out to me uh, a week ago, I want to say, and said, hey, I made this new Apache 2. That's important. This Apache 2 uh, open source thing about observability. Uh, I'd like, who, you know, how, how could I, you know, could I, where, where, where should I go to talk about it? And I said, well, why don't you come here? Uh, so this is not a CNCF project. Uh, this is an Apache 2 project, but it's in our domain, our, our area of you know, what's relevant. So it is in scope and I can't wait to hear about it. Uh, by the way, your GitHub tag has to be one of the cooler GitHub tags I think I've ever okay. seen. It's key valve. So, uh, uh, and if yeah. there are any slides you're using, uh, please feel free to drop them so that others watching later can, can follow along. Um, yeah, and please share your screen if that's easy. Yeah, sure. And thank you for uh, reaching out. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, we'll be happy to, really curious to hear what you think about uh, this project. So as Matt said just last week, uh, I released this uh, open source project, a completely Apache license uh, called Audiglass. Uh, basically what we're trying to do with this project is to basically help uh, developers enjoy like, the entire promise of observability, you know, uh, traces, metrics, and logs, and the ability to correlate between one another, but without having to uh, basically be very familiar with either open telemetry or eBPF. You don't have to know any API or SDK or know how to configure any collectors. Um, I think I will show you a demo. Uh, it will be uh, really clear. So uh, on the one hand here, I have uh, like, um, I'm demoing on Datadog, but we support uh, multiple vendors and the next version that should hopefully come out tomorrow will support many other uh, open source uh, vendors, so don't worry. Uh, so I have here an empty Datadog account that I just created. And on the other hand, I have here a Kubernetes cluster with uh, 
this microservices demo example from Google of uh, e-commerce application, but a fork of it without any instrumentation code, just regular applications. And I want to show you how we get into traces, metrics, and logs in a few easy steps. Uh, so I install, I'm going to install our project, Prodigos, uh, it's a home chart. And the next step we're going to do is uh, basically go to our user interface. And you can see now that Odigas is detecting all the running pods in our cluster and basically detects the programming language of, uh, of every application running. And uh, this is important because Odigas is going to use the, the best instrumentation tool for according to the programming language for every, every pod. So for like, compiled languages like Go, we are actually using uh, an open source, another other open source project that uh, we released. Uh, and uh, open telemetry go automatic instrumentation based on EBPF, which uh, is finally approved by the open telemetry technical committee to be part of the project. So uh, hopefully soon it will be under open telemetry. Uh, but for for other applications like Java or .NET or Python, we will use the regular uh, vanilla automatic instrumentation for open telemetry. And we have here two modes of operations. You can choose either opt out, which will basically mean the instrument all the applications and automatically instrument any new application that is being deployed into this Kubernetes cluster, or we can choose an opt-in mode, which manually select uh, which applications we want uh, to instrument. So I choose opt-out, opt -out. and basically now I can choose whenever where I want to send uh, uh, my observability data, which vendor I would like to use. As you can see, we currently support four vendors, but hopefully tomorrow there will be like uh, four more here, mostly open source. So I just go ahead and grab my uh, Datadog API key. I'll give it some name, choose the region. And now if we look on our Kubernetes uh, cluster, we can see that our applications are, <clears throat> some of them are going to be redeployed. Uh, again, with the, with the right instrumentation, either EVPF based or often telemetry based. And um, we give it a few seconds. Uh, the, basically, the last step that remains to, to do is basically just generate some traffic, click a few buttons, and uh, see all of our observability data automatically and magically pops into the data dog. Um, so we do just, yeah, just that. So this is this uh, Microsoft application again, completely regular. Uh, it's a fork, it's a known example. Uh, really, no uh, opportunity SDKs or API or whatever. And we can just uh, just click the buttons too, so we have um, some data. And this should be enough for our. Uh, Yes, and as you can see, uh, we now have all of our applications uh, with metrics and traces as uh, we call data dog. Uh, and again, without having to, it's like, it's abstract away all the complexity of uh, either uh, EBPF, which is really complex, or open telemetry, which is uh, a little bit nicer, but still you have to learn all those uh, SDKs and APIs and know how to uh, configure these collectors. And we have your traces and metrics and the, uh, for other vendors, we also have our logs. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically it. Uh, really curious to hear uh, what you think about it. Um, I'm sorry, there we go. Thank you so much for giving a demo. Uh, might you walk through what this is sort of below the UI? Um, you've got a great, in your docs, you've got a, a reasonable architecture page. So perhaps you can kind of talk through your design for, for how it's implemented for those that might be looking at it for the very first time. Uh, I've also dropped in a link to the CNCF's project template. Um, it has a lot of good starter markdowns around like a contributor ladder and, you know, just some of the boilerplate stuff that mm -hmm. is good for any open source project, CNCF or, or, or otherwise. Uh, so. Yeah, sounds good. I'll definitely look at it. So the way we think about it is sort of, uh, like a control plane for observability data. It takes care of uh, entry created to either instrumentation or collector-wise. Uh, 
uh, in a high level, it contains four different components, uh, Kubernetes uh, operators, uh, the instrumental, scheduler, autoscaler, and the user interface that I showed you. Basically, instrumental is the, is the component that's responsible to detect uh, every pod's programming language and apply the, the right uh, instrumentation, either open energy or EBPF based. Uh, autoscaler basically is the one that uh, uh, deploys the collector and configure them according to uh, what the user specified in the user interface. But it's pretty basic, but we hopefully will support more features like uh, sampling and uh, filtering, uh, which uh, will make the autoscaler a little bit more complex. And the user interface is just the React application that uh, uh, let users work in a nice uh, user interface. But of course, you can do it in YAML if you prefer. And uh, the scheduler is just because it uh, uh, ties everything together and the uh, schedule between uh, waiting for the collectors to come up and then we do the instrumentation and basically uh, coordinates everything together. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, we have here some more uh, documentation. Again, it's a really new project that we really just uh, last week. So you can see all the different data that we know how to how to send. So we have traces, we have metrics, we actually have three types of metrics. We have uh, uh, like metrics that are based on the traces, which is something that most of the vendors do automatically. And uh, we have like runtime metrics, like a uh, garbage collection and threads and uh, uh, heap and memory. And we have like uh, more uh, infrastructure metrics, like uh, host environments, CPU, memory, disk allocations. And of course, we have traces and logs. Uh, as logs are pretty new in open telemetry, we are not able to like correlate them efficiently to, to traces and metrics in every programming languages. I think it's currently uh, mostly works for Java, the correlation, uh, but you can uh, get the relevant logs by timestamp or by host name and do that. And we also have here another documentation about the different uh, custom resources that we're adding to Kubernetes in order to achieve uh, all this obstruction above open telemetry and ABPF. Uh, we have here three types destination, which basically represents a uh, yeah, destination where we want to uh, send observability data into. Instrumented application is basically. Uh, it's additional fields on top of deployments are of stateful set, uh, like which programming languages, which instrumentation we should use, uh, which collector we should talk to. And collectors group is uh, is a part of the collectors pipeline uh, that's responsible to achieve some uh, common goal, either collect uh, logs or collect metrics or send them as a gateway to one of the vendors. Um, yeah. You uh, you mentioned that it uses eBPF as well. I guess are there any limitations? I guess it sounds like you're kind of going two routes to get you know, for example, like traces. I think it says that you do you know either eBPF or OTEL. I guess you know sometimes it's hard to use eBPF. I guess you know you have to be on the right you know like Linux version and stuff like that. I guess are there any limitations that you currently kind of face with uh you know things that rely on ebpf if you know for whatever reason you know it's unable to run or it doesn't work for a particular language or something like that mm -hmm. yeah so uh good question so thank you uh you said it uh, right uh basically we depend on being uh, on the linux nodes i think that ebpf for windows is currently in development but i'm not really sure about what's the status of this and uh, whenever windows will support ebpf uh, our automatic instrumentation will be supported on Windows uh, also. Uh, regarding kernel version, I think it requires kernel version 4. something, I don't remember what. But anyway, all the all the managed uh, Kubernetes offers that I looked on the popular cloud providers or the uh, hosted or the locally run Kubernetes, like uh, Minikube and Kind, all of them are uh, currently supported, all of them are. Uh, and a recent enough kernel. And uh, so I guess there is some cases which uh, we want support, uh, especially Windows and like really old kernels, but uh, 
we are not using a very new uh, recent features of eBPF, which basically let us use a pretty old uh, kernels uh, relatively. All right, cool, thanks. Um, I, have a, I have a question, but I wanna let anybody else ask questions first. Okay, um, so so this is this is neat. It's clearly um, you know you're configuring open telemetry uh, components directly. That that's helpful uh, and, and and introducing you know operators uh, and such. Is there any record or artifact uh, in terms of what configuration has been generated and then sent to a server? You know such that that could be worked into a GitOps workflow. And then sort of similarly, but in a slightly different dimension, you know, um, if I'm running a, if I'm, suppose I'm a cluster operator, right, and, and I've got governance and all this stuff down with deployment strategies and methodologies, uh, uh, because I'm in regulated industry, say, and I have to deal mm -hmm. with compliance, like, th th this is like real time instrumenting, you know, on, on, on the fly, uh, things which, which are now producing a different resultant binary, or, or are you doing this via in a knit container, uh, yeah. you know, and, and and if so, like, again, sort of the same kind of thing, like, uh, I realized too, by the way, this is not criticism. This is like, I think you did this like in a week or two, <laughs> like this is like very recent and very new project. So so take take the questions as, as honest questions and not cloaked criticism, <laughs> please. Um, but, you know, uh, how might that be accounted for, for an audit stream or something? I mean, it's clearly useful for a development context, but if I wanted to actually walk to, walk up to a cluster that a different team is having a problem with, or, or on the cluster that I'm running, some app team has deployed to a namespace and they want to, you know, use this, or, you know, they want me, the cluster operator to make it possible for them to use this. Um, what might I have to do? And, and if that's not, has that already been kind of thought out? Or, or scoped out? Uh, so yeah, I think that's like, this is like the, one of the main reasons why I made it open source and one of the main reasons why I came to this meeting to show it to you is that we want to be as open as possible about uh, whatever we do to our cluster and uh, specifically EBPF, which requires an uh, like elevated uh, uh, permissions. Uh, and again, we hope that uh, we'll have many users that are using it and uh, it will be uh, sort of like a easier way to use open telemetry and EBPF. Uh, I think about it like a uh, more abstracted way if you know uh, the open telemetry operator project. So it's a little bit like that, but uh, like not abstraction and above it and uh, using technologies that are not uh, specifically open telemetry. Um, and regarding to like regulated clusters and this, it's our own valid points and stuff we will need to, to take into consideration. Uh, uh, it's sure to add it to our roadmap and uh, look into it. Um, I guess, I, cool, thank you for, for that. And, and a follow on question, uh, if there's already the open telemetry collector configured on some or other namespaces or uh, you have parts of the cluster or the whole cluster systemically or other open telemetry components that are already there. And then a user walks up with, with this and then uses it. Um, are you doing a merge of configuration or is it um, a known, uh, you, you, you know what I mean? Like, again, I'm thinking through like operationally, you know, what, what would happen or how could I use this in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a case where I'm already using open telemetry? Yeah, so currently they will just live side by side, you know, the existing uh, pipeline or existing application that you already instrument and then your collectors that you already configured and you will have uh, like whatever we do uh, automatically without instrumentation, not uh, uh, collectors configurations. Uh, currently they will not uh, like into, uh, touch uh, one another. Uh, but hopefully in the future, we, we really want to, to be able to work to, to to go to clusters that are already have open telemetry or EBPF in some some way or another and help them to take them to uh, to to the next level. Uh, just yesterday, I think one of our users talked to me and uh, they had only Grafana with metrics and uh, they used .egress and now they have uh, distributed tracing and uh, also they have uh, their logs in Uralic. Uh, 
without having to know uh, like any any reading or they don't have to read any any article about how to instrument and how to work with open telemetry and of course uh, not uh, but uh, to your question yeah it's something that that is they will not uh, work together but in the future will definitely thank you um i only have one last comment and one suggestion that i give uh, uh well, uh, one one suggestion and one one final question that I give to all all folks that present to the tag, um, from from wherever they come from uh, in terms of project, uh, whether it's CNCF or otherwise. Uh, but I'll start with the suggestion. Uh, if you haven't already, um, I strongly recommend and, and other folks on the call here, Steve or Alalita, to point you specifically where I, I don't I don't actually know offhand, but where would the best place within the hotel set of community uh, groups and meetups and, and, and whatnot, SIGs, uh, would be best suited uh, to see this presentation as well, because you know there might be similar efforts or, or it'd be cool to have their feedback. And, and that, that was the suggestion. Then the, the final question for me uh, is, uh, uh, if someone's watching this uh, video next week or, or tomorrow or whenever, uh, how should they best uh, engage with the project? Uh, if they wanted to contribute or build a top it, uh, do you have meetings already, or is that all TBD? TBD. Uh, how, how should yeah, folks? So, yeah, so we do uh, issues and pull requests, and we also have a, a Slack community. Uh, we plan to do weekly meetings, and uh, yeah, uh, everything else that we needed. Uh, yeah, that's that's awesome because I mean, being on uh, GitHub, you do not I think it's easy to uh contribute and track the issues on the project itself but from an open telemetry perspective i would recommend that uh again if you haven't already please um you know given that you're working with the go sdk definitely uh join into the go sig and sig meetings which are weekly and present you know an overview of the project as well as um the uh, typically the uh, maintainers meeting also is an, another interesting um, uh, SIG meeting to join in for just uh, you know updating all the maintainers that this is a component that you know could be also possibly used with other SDKs for example um, and and uh, again instrumentation is always a very um, you know key topic for hotel. Uh, contributors because it's just you know instrumentation uh, the better the instrumentation the easier you know the adoption mm -hmm. of of the components becomes right so uh and and please feel free to ping me or uh, steve on the on the cncf uh slack uh, channels i'm happy mm -hmm. to uh, invite you to <laughs> come and present sure yep sure. same allowed covered it very well thanks Sure, I will. I'll definitely do it. Awesome, awesome. And then, uh, Eden, again, if you're on the CNCF Slack, which I'm sure you are, <laughs> go for it. please, please just ping me, and we'll we can uh, uh, cover this on the project. That would be awesome. Thank you. Cool. Uh, I think. Um, Matt, did you have any other closing topics? I think we can probably give back folks 10 minutes if we're done. Yeah, I, I've got <laughs> nothing else on the agenda. Um, if folks want to talk about that landscape graph project or, or, or other things related to it around supply chain uh, or some of the opportunities to work with tag security uh, or any of the other stuff we've mentioned, please do reach out on Slack uh, or, or or directly. But yeah, that's all I've got. Um, thank you Yeah, again. and... and um, did you want to share the Slack channel for landscape graphs specifically, uh, Matt, or should we just um, use? Oh, the... yeah, it's in prior notes. I guess I don't want to spend time on it because I've already taken up some time, uh, I think, last week or the week before. But yes, it's just in CNCF Slack, it's just landscape graph. Landscape yeah. graph. Sounds uh, good. And then same thing on GitHub. But yeah. Awesome. Ryan, anything else from you? Uh, did you want to? cover anything on um, your end? Yeah, nothing else from my side. Um, and from the hotel profiling stuff, uh, basically the next, I guess, just like a, a quick update. That, oh, I just realized my camera's on. Um, the, the quick update there is uh, we are working on an official o OTEP um, 
So uh, basically an official proposal, uh, sort of like clarifying the high level vision um, and then sharing that with everyone to make sure that um, both the community is aware of the efforts that we're doing and agree that it is a uh, you know worthwhile endeavor um, before we kind of nail down more of the specifics. So that's kind of what we're focusing on right now. Um, we got a second TC member to sort of uh, oversee things. Uh, Josh Sewerwith. Oh, okay, okay, Josh Sewerwith. Awesome. Yeah. Um, as well as Tigran. And then, um, yeah, so uh, we meet every other week. Uh, so not this week, but we will meet again next Thursday to talk about the uh, proposal. Fantastic. That's, uh, that's great. You, you jogged my memory. Uh, there was one thing in the TOC related to this uh, when, when talking about, you know, just say, hey, there's this thing going on. Um, I do strongly feel that we should, we should once we have that OTEP, that's just the, the, the initial kind of vision, um, or as early as possible, we should be engaging with communities that are open source communities, but perhaps not in the CNCF proper, or perhaps they're in a different Linux Foundation landscape, you know, like, uh, you know, edge hardware manufacturers that are running SOCs to run Kubernetes, you know, or, or other, other sorts of mobile, uh, mobile clients or mobile scenarios around all manner of stuff. Uh, so, you know, um, I think that that's something that the tag can facilitate. So again, there's only a handful of people here, but there are hundreds and hundreds of people on our Slack channel and, and people that download the YouTube videos and, and such. So uh, if you know someone in your professional network or, or, of a, or of a community or a group that is also interested in this topic around a standardized format for profiling uh, as a, and ancillary topics or whatever, uh, their feedback would be great. Uh, for example, I've also, reached out to tag security about this in particular. There's a link in the in the slide from the TOC. Uh, but you know, continuous profiling from from systemic uh, settings like cluster wide or or, or even namespace wide, you know, that forms a very interesting signal uh, for threat assessment, you know, for intrusion detection, anomaly detection, um, you know, all, all manner of security related uh, workflows could benefit from uh, continuous profiling. So, you know, it would behoove us, I, I, I would imagine, to, to get feedback from them on what their use cases are and what's important to them, because it's probably different than what's important to the folks that are already engaged in the conversation. And I think that's a good thing, right? We can get all of these different scenarios together from the, from the outset. I think we have a much better longer term uh, chance of, of really getting broad consensus and support for OTEL and, and this. So I'll be doing that, but yeah, um, if anyone reach out to Ryan directly or, or to the profiles channel uh, or, or, or to any, or to myself or whoever. <laughs> Thanks. Sounds good. Ideally the open channel, actually. Back channels mean <laughs> you're repeat, repeating everything. Go to the hotel profiles channel, that's where you should go. <laughs> I want to revise my statement. Thank you. Yep, sure. All right, cool. Uh, I think we'll still give back five minutes to everybody. <laughs> so thanks, everyone. Have a great day and uh, chat soon. Bye. Take care. Thank you.